horror author William Patterson, a.k.a. Eric Morris. And welcome to my world. So sit back and experience a new dimension in talk. And make sure to have your lucky cup of coffee here because this is the coffee vlog. Yes, it does. First thing in the morning, I pour myself a cup. It, it helps me get myself going. It helps to wake me up. Goran Scares, everybody, and welcome of the William Pattison Coffee Vlog. Sippy, sippy. Okay, yes, that's not coffee. You know, it's water. But it is summer, and it is about 95 degrees in my bedroom, so uh, <laughs> no coffee. <laughs> Anyways, why I'm doing a coffee vlog, since I haven't done one in such a long time, is... I absolutely felt that I needed to. Uh, recently, the horror and science fiction genres had an incredible loss. That being the loss of Mr. Harlan Ellison. And the thing is that with Harlan Ellison gone... You know, his wisdom, his thoughts, you know, you know, there's, there's no one to carry on that. I had, you know, really listened to Harlan in that, and I learned a lot from the man. I, you know, I consider him my mentor you know, he may not have personally handheld the uh, taught me stuff, but by reading his writings, his essays, listening to his videos, listening to him talk, his philosophy, you know, talk about his philosophies and that, uh, I gained a lot. Harlan taught me to stand up for myself as a writer. And the thing is that right now I'm seeing that the writers in horror really need someone to stand up and tell them that they need to get off their little butts and fight for their rights. You know, a um, number of years ago, Harlan Ellison, in his documentary uh, about himself, he did a section called Pay the Writer. And in it, he talked about how when he worked on Babylon 5, he had done a series of interviews, and later on, this company that was uh, reissuing Babylon 5, they wanted to use his interviews for an extra on the disc. Well, Harlan asked them, well, how much, how much are you going to uh, pay me? And these people sat there and bold-faced said, well, everyone else is doing it for free. And Harlan told them, yeah, well, everyone else can be an asshole. But, you know, you want to use my interviews, you pay me. I'm a professional. You pay me. And he went through uh, this entire list of uh, jobs. And he said, oh, well, you know, would, would you have someone pull out your spleen for free. You know, and all these different things. And he says, how dare you ask 
to use my interviews and not pay me. And, you know, and they go, oh, well, thank you, goodbye. And he said he'd, he'd never hear from them, and he never did. And he said that, you know, the one thing that he really hated was that even if they did use his interviews, uh, they wouldn't send him a copy of the DVD. You know, he, he'd had this happen time and time again. You know, and he'd end up calling six months later and he'd go, uh, where's my DVD? And they go, well, it's been out for six months. Why don't you uh, uh, go and order yourself a copy? And he goes, you order a copy. You order a copy. You know, six months. And you haven't given me my DVD. He says, yo, send me my DVD or I'm going to come down there and I'm going to burn down your offices. And you go, well, you don't have to be so nasty. He goes, yes, I have to be, because it's been six months. And I understand that. I do understand that. You know, because we've got it worse in the horror community. Horror writers, screenplay people, and people who write biographies in horror get treated like third-class citizens. You know, we, we try to get into conventions and convention organizers treat us like shit. They go and they, they say, uh, oh, well, you know, you know you're going to have to pay 250 for a table. You're going to have to pay for your... Uh, hotel, you're going to have to pay for your flight, and you're going to have to pay somebody to bring your stuff in and put it on your table. And we're going to put you in the back of the vendor's room where you belong. Excuse me? Here's a little piece of uh, reality for you people. Horror actors like Kane Hodder, they get asked to be at a convention. They get free room, they get free flight, they get free table. And in the case of Kane Hodder, he gets a $25,000 guarantee. So... You know, and, and what gets me is Kane Hodder gets all this. And he'll go and he'll walk off from his table and not, not take care of his fans. He'll go sit in the, he'll go sit in the uh, back area with the other stars and fucking let people uh, come to his table and go, where's Kane? Whereas a person like me, shit, the last two conventions that I went to, I was at my table most of the day, and I was there so much that I ended up dehydrating and ending up going to the emergency. Because I wanted to be there for my fans. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you, 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 you listen to these uh, convention organizers, and it's, it's disgusting. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, writers and screenwriters, you're, you're in the back of the vendor's room. Oh, documentary filmmakers. Oh, the guys that made, his name is Jason. Oh, you get free table, free hotel. You know, you get, you get uh, a flight. All your people get a flight to the convention on us. On the convention. Guess what, people? Guess writers. Guess what, writers? If you're a sci-fi writer and you go to a sci-fi convention... 
They will pay for your hotel. They will pay for your table. You know, they may not pay for, for your flight. And they'll put you in the writer's area, which is usually at the center of the convention. Right there. Not in the vendor's room, right there in the center of the convention. Because sci-fi respects their authors. They fucking respect their authors. They don't treat them like third-class citizens. They don't sit there, eh, well, screenwriters, uh-huh. You know, we, we don't want screenwriters, no. We'd rather, uh... We'd rather throw in uh, rock singers and wrestlers instead of uh, horror authors. No, they deserve more than, uh, say, like a horror author. You know, they get they get all of, all the same things that Kane Hodder gets, while the uh book authors and that they get they get thrown thrown to the side like garbage and yeah yeah it's not you know it's not just the conventions either people and you need to understand this horror awards the only horror award that I can honestly say that doesn't fit this mold is the Bram Stoker's Award. So, you know, they're good. They're good on my... They're the only one. But the Fango Awards, when they had them, the, the Hauser Awards, all of those awards... Guess what they do for horror writing? Meaning screenplays, comic books, biographies, short stories, all of those. They provide only one category and one award. Every single one of these fuckers do that. So, you know, this should be like six different categories. You know, there's, you know, you shouldn't bunch them all together and say, oh, well, here's just one award. You know, it can, you know, and more than likely it's going to end up being a comic book or something. Rather than, rather than a, an actual written work. You know, that someone's, you know, I'm not going to talk against uh, horror comics because, you know, they do a good job, so... You know, I'm not going to get that that snipey. But there should be a separate award for short stories, separate award for novels, separate award for comic books, separate award for biographies. Separate awards. Because all of these categories deserve appreciation they deserve an award of their own but these assholes that run these uh awards they don't think that they don't no no we didn't we don't think that you know oh yeah yeah well horror actors oh yeah you get supporting actors you get all this other shit you know, like they do at the Academy Awards, but writing, it's like, fuck you, writers. And, you know, and say, you know, here, here's, here's who's responsible for this. It's not them, honestly, horror writers uh, and screenwriters and all that. It's you. You allow it. You allow it. You sit there and you go, oh, status quo, I don't want, 
want them to take away what little I do have. Fuck you. You got nothing, people. You get treated like dirt. You need to stand up, especially now. Things are changing in horror. The entertainment industry is seeing horror in a new light. Horror is taking on a new importance in the entertainment industry. And we need to stand up as artists and ask for equal consideration. Equal consideration. I mean, especially since the truth is that there wouldn't be a horror genre without horror writers. And, you know, these assholes can sit there and quibble and bullshit their way out of this shit, but that is the fucking truth. We deserve consideration. If there wasn't, if it wasn't for writers, there would be no genre, period. Because before there were films, there were horror novels. And we, the writers, have an importance. You know, look at, look at Friday the 13th. If it wasn't for a writer, a soap opera writer named Victor Miller... If it wasn't for him, there would be no Jason Voorhees. There would be no Mrs. Voorhees. There would be no Camp Crystal Lake. There wouldn't, there wouldn't, the 80s would be a horribly different time if it wasn't for Victor Miller. And Victor currently is doing the right thing and he is fighting for his rights. He is suing Paramount, he is suing New Line, and he is asking for his rights as creator. Bravo, Victor. I applaud you for it. Stand up to him. That's what I'm saying, people. We need to stand up. You know... You want to be a, a writer, you want to be an author, be a professional. A professional gets paid. You know, if you if Fangoria asks you for an interview, the first words that come out of your mouth should be, how much you're gonna pay me. Seriously. And if they if they say no, we're not gonna pay you. Well, are you going to compensate me in some way? Am I going to get a uh, subscription to Fangoria? Am I going to get a copy of the issue? You know, how are you going to compensate me for this interview? And they say, well, well, we're giving you a chance. No. I'm giving you a chance. I'm the author. It's going to be my interview that you're going to use to sell your magazine. So how are you going to compensate me for that? That's what I'm saying. You deserve compensation. It doesn't have to be money. It can be anything. You know, if you're doing a podcast and, the, and it's an independent podcast, you know, ask them, yeah, well, well, will I be able to come back on for my next book? You know, to talk about my next book and that. If, if they say yes, we'll, we'll do that. We'll make sure that you come on for your next book and you can be a regular a uh, person to come on our podcast and that whenever you have a new work, then go for it. But if they're, if they're tweaky about it, I don't know, then say no. That's it. You got the power. They don't have the power, people. 
You are the one that has the decision. You are the one that is the author. They came to you. Stop acting like you're a beggar with a bowl. Stop acting like you're begging for stuff. You are a professional. Professionals need to be compensated. You know, I mean, seriously, a real professional, they don't take a shit professionally unless they get paid for it in some way. And that's what you need to do. You need to get compensated. The other assholes in horror uh, get compensated. You think Kane Hodder does anything for free? Really? You think so? Hell no. He doesn't do shit without getting compensated. None of them do. But they expect the authors to sit there and bow their heads. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll do your interview for you. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm this pathetic right. Fuck you. No. This is the time when we stand up. Harlan Ellison, when he was alive, he really had, you know, issues with this generation of writers and fans and that because we were not living up to what we should be. And he constantly said that we needed to be more professional. We needed to stand up for ourselves. Harlan, Harlan stood up for himself all through his life. You know, he, he got paid for what he did. So what I'm saying, people, is now it is time for horror authors and horror screenwriters and those people who have been treated like they are third-class citizens to stand up and say, no more. No more. You want, you want my interview? How much are you going to pay for it? I'll go cash or trade but you're going to compensate me for it. So, in the words of Harlan Ellison, pay the writer. Alrighty, so that was my uh, coffee vlog. You know, if you have any questions or if you want to sit there and comment, you can go on my Facebook page and comment all you want if you're in my friends list. Anywhere else, sorry. I'm, uh, I have to block because of a bunch of low-life pieces of shit who come on my uh, uh, YouTube and talk shit. So, alrighty. So, anyways, uh, be ready for another coffee vlog sometime in the future. You know, as always, this is William Patterson, King of Splatterpunk, author of the Camp Crystal Lake novels, and the Harlan Ellison of horror, saying, keep America strong, watch horror films, and drink your coffee or drink your water, in, in my case. Ah!